What's up guys, welcome back to the Saba Karimo for part number 17 and round 17 of season 1. As you can see from the uh, tower, you can, we can tell that we are here at the Circuit of Americas in Austin, Texas to start off the uh, the final few races of the season really. We're, in, we're all into the final stretch, just three America American races and then the final race in Abu Dhabi. Thankfully, uh, no one has made any major upgrades except for a minor upgrade for Force India, which is taking them a little bit further away from that midfield. But everyone else, which we're trying to catch, hasn't really made progress. So that's uh, good for us. Let's get into practice now for the US Grand Prix. Lights are about to turn green here in Austin, so we should start to see the cars take to the track. Welcome to today's practice session at the United States Grand Prix. A warm welcome once again to the man standing beside me in the commentary box for this session, Anthony Davidson. Hello, Ant. Excited to get underway? Yeah, absolutely. I always look forward to seeing the cars get out there on track. And they probably won't be on the limit immediately, of course. Uh, we know that one or two of the teams are looking to do some work on new aerodynamic packages, so that always takes some time to get into. But it'll be really interesting to see later on in the session what kind of performance gains are there to be found. All right, here we are in practice one on a glorious start to uh, the uh, Grand Prix at the uh, Circuit of the Americas. We head up and accelerate up towards turn one, the reverse of what uh, you get in uh, Austria. I think that was the reason why it was uh, that first corner was based off that when they were initially designing the circuit. But really, once again, we're just trying to get as many resource points as possible. I'm tempted to actually get one final upgrade to this car before I decide to save up for the uh, end of the season and then start making multiple upgrades to the start of for the start of next season I'm hoping that we can then close the gap to that 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 gap that suddenly opened up between ourselves and McLaren in the last race if you guys haven't seen that please do uh, check it out as we come through the uh, very more technical section of the circuit in the uh, at the end of sector two as we come through the uh, last couple of corners we looks like we are going to get the uh, maximum available uh, number of resource points available to come through the final corner right now I have got a little bit, bit of traffic that's coming up behind us which is uh, put it off a little bit but we do manage to get it and uh, ensure that we are able to uh, get maximum use of so that was actually Ferrari that was right behind us that was the uh, Ferrari of Raikkonen who's in a bit of a uh, title battle now that uh, his uh, lead has been completely eroded away after some disappointing results in uh, Singapore and also in uh, Belgium and, and um, last time out in uh, Japan if you, if you guys remember watching we had a little bit of a titanic battle with him at the start of the race after uh, both of us have suffered um, having to make extra pit stops due to uh, front wing damage. But as we now come through the uh, final corner again to finish off the tire wear test, we're able to get that perfect as well, which is absolutely fantastic. The uh, weather then changed a little bit. I think this is in practice two, though. So uh, thankfully, no uh, rain actually came down. So we ended up doing uh, fuel saving in the dry. But we're really just trying to make sure we get as much uh, fuel saving as possible. We're really trying to lift off. Through all that uh, section, it's quite si the, uh, the section of sector one, which is very similar to the uh, Maggot and Beckett complex in uh, at Silverstone. It's a, the circuit is very based off very quite a few different features from previous and current circuits on the uh, F1 calendar. As I mentioned before, the Red Bull Ring right at the start of the uh, practice uh, when I was going through the going through this practice recap. But also, it's got the uh, based off. Uh, it's got one corner or oh, four corners that are based off the. Uh, Turn 8 section that you remember, if you guys remember the Turkish Grand Prix, which we're actually going through right about now. It's just before the uh, final two corners of the actual lap itself. As we now come through into the race strategy, we were able to get the uh, maximum number of resource points from the fuel saving and also able to do, the, do it in the uh, race strategy. So that is four out of four for us, which is absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, though, we weren't able to get the uh, five out of five with the uh, practice program for the qualifying, going, qualifying pace not going as expected. I think mainly because of the fact that our uh, engine that we're currently using is quite old and therefore we lack the power that we uh, needed down the straight. But that's just one of those things. We managed to get four out of five and we did pass the objective. So it means that we will have those resource points to play with. We don't have enough just yet to get any uh, upgrades as I mentioned previously with regards to the power, but uh, hopefully we can get that after uh, qualifying. Expecting qualifying to start any minute here in Austin, Texas, where drivers will be hoping to top the timesheets today and be ready for tomorrow's US Grand Prix. So then, Ant, it's another Grand Prix weekend, another exciting qualifying session ahead of us. 
What are you going to be looking out for over the next few minutes? The first question is going to be who can avoid making mistakes. There isn't much margin for error in qualifying, and you have to bear in mind that the track conditions may have changed since practice, particularly as we've had a few support races in the meantime. If the brake bias settings, for example, don't take this into account, it's extremely easy to lock up a front wheel and cause a flat spot. Just like that, your lap's ruined, and you've wasted a set of tyres to boot. All right, here we are starting our opening lap in qualifying one. And as always, though, this uh, first lap is mainly just to try and get that delta onto the, uh, the port timing screen. So it's not really, I'm not really expecting to be a completely perfect lap, but that second lap hopefully will mean we will, we will do that. We will improve that on that initial lap. And then once we go out for a second run, we should be, then be able to uh, improve on that by having a complete fresh set of tyres and also the lowest possible uh, fuel settings. As we now come through the uh, end of the, the end of the, or at, we finished this at the second sector, coming through the uh, final sector now. As we now come across the line, currently sat in tenth place ahead of our teammate Verlon, but behind Stoffel Van Dorn, which is interesting. This probably means that we're currently going to be sat out of uh, Q1 at the moment as we now start our final flying lap. Currently up on our previous best, which is fantastic. We are in front of Lance Stroll, which is interesting. I'm not sure why Stroll is struggling so much, especially with the fact that those uh, with those with that very long straight at this prior to the uh, end of the second sector, but it must be those twisty technical sections that is the reason why uh, Stroll is struggling. As we come across the line, move, do improve and go in front of Verline and also Alonso, but unfortunately, it's only up to 16th, and that means we are out in uh, Q1, which is a shame. Our rival Magnussen actually gets through, which is a little bit disappointing. It means that he'll gain a few more points in the uh, the rivalry standings but it's going to make it a little bit more interesting i think it's going to be very close between myself and the dane towards the end of the season it might actually go all the way to down to that final race so yeah i, I hyped up for the challenges uh, also we managed to get as i mentioned we got ahead of both mclaren's lance stroll as well but and also pascal verlana who's having a little bit of a disappointing uh campaign now that's the uh, mclaren have actually started it had that massive performance upgrade in uh, japan after the uh patch but anyways now that we have enough resource points to actually purchase a uh, another upgrade i decided as i as i mentioned a bit earlier on we are going to get the next power upgrade just so it means we're close to uh, both renault and also torosso who are also powered by renault but it also provides that little bit more of a buffer between ourselves and mclaren due to that a uh, little bit up a little bit of an upgrade that they've got in performance and especially as we've got some power straight com power tracks coming up with the mexico and also the final race in Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi, as I mentioned before. Also, Brazil has a couple of uh, long straights as well with that uh, start-finish line and also that uh, second uh, DRS zone. So that might prove to come in handy in terms of actually trying to uh, overtake people and also trying to fend people off. The other thing I decided to do, because we were knocked out in Q1, I just thought, let's take a one final set of engine penalties for the uh, this season and just get ourselves on, onto a fresh, uh, get, give ourselves a fresh engine for the last few races of the season, potentially that engine could be used for uh, the final race, just to just so we have one last gas final fresh engine compared to the rest of the field. And also means that I think the rest of the AI will actually potentially take engine penalties right at the end, because I think there's a couple of glitches, a couple of uh, weird grids that we saw on other F1 career modes that I've been watching that uh, saw guys benefit from uh, not taking engine penalties towards the end. Whilst the AI were actually, the rest of the drivers were all taking penalties. So uh, we'll have to see if we can take advantage of that. But anyways, we've taken enough engine penalties. So we're probably going to be starting last. But here is now the race. With me today is Anthony Davidson, a man who knows this circuit quite well. Why do you think, though, Ants, that this Grand Prix has now found such huge success since returning to the calendar in 2012? Well, full credit to the race promoters. They have a Grand Prix in a part of the country famed for its love of motorsport, and they do a fantastic job of advertising it to the right crowd, and then satisfying them when they're here with excellent facilities. It also tends to help when the circuit itself is good, and that's definitely true here. The layout is interesting, and it produces some exciting action. Hosting a thrilling title decider like we had in 2015 wouldn't hurt either, so the pressure's on then to maintain that kind of quality here today. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position, and starting alongside in P2 is Sebastian Vettel. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Raikkonen, Daniel Ricciardo, and Verstappen, Hülkenberg, Ocon, Grosjean, and Sergio Perez. Magnussen, 
Massa, Carlos Sainz, and Palmer, Kvyat, Alonso, Lance Stroll, and Pascal Wehrlein. Van Dorn and a Sauber rounds off the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Try and finish 17th or higher today. Thanks, Jeff. I should be able to achieve that considering the, uh, the, the nearest cars that are in front of us. I think we should be able to get the better of the both McLarens if we get the strategy right. And I should be able to get in front of my teammate unless anything stupid happens like what we had in uh, Suzuka. So really, we're just going to make sure we stay out of trouble at the uh, start. As we have a look at the race strategy, making ourselves a little bit heavier in terms of fuel such that we have a little bit of rich fuel mixture to use a bit later on, hopefully a little bit later on in the race. And also switching the tyre compounds around just so we have a little bit more flexibility with the strategy and then we're on the quicker tyre as well at the end of the race. You never know with regards to safety cars, we might end up going straight onto ultra softs after the uh, soft tough, soft tyre compound stint, but we'll have to uh, wait and see on that front. Um, you never know what's going to happen with this uh, game as well, especially with, as we haven't, I don't think we've had a safety, an actual proper safety car for a good number of races, so uh, I'll have to wait and see on that front. Anyways, as I mentioned before, really objective to start is to stay out of trouble after what happened in Singapore and also what happened in a uh, last time out in Japan where we had to make an extra pit stop due to the uh, front wing So I'm hoping we just make sure we don't run into the back of anybody and no one comes in comes across and swipes us off So uh, without further ado though, let's get ready for the start of the US Grand Prix Lights out and away we go and it's a decent-ish start, not so much for our teammate Verline, which forces down to the right-hand side of the track, which is kind of not really where I want to be, especially when there's so many cars on that side of the circuit at this moment. So that's why we had to take a little bit of avoiding action by going off the track prior to that corner, which we can still last. Look at Verline, he's already got himself back past Van Dorn by going up the inside of him. He's now overtaking Stroll, I think, in front of him, so he's now up in 17 as we head through sector one for the first time in this race. A little bit of bodywork that's been coming off here and there, so I'm not sure who that's come off of. Hopefully it's not our team, but we're actually going to go on board with Verline and see what actually happened. Looks like a Toros got forced out, and Verline hits the back of him, which means he's damaged his front wing, so it was our teammate that sadly suffered a little bit of damage. Nothing else happened on the foot opening lap, so we're going to cut straight away to lap two as we try to start to make progress here. We're trying to go up the inside of Stoffel van Dorn into the heavy braking zone prior to the end of the second sector, but he's managed to fend us off somehow having better traction off the exit of the course. We're going to have to be patient with that. Verlines looks like he's lost a place to Stroll as we now try and go up the inside of Van Dorn like Alonso did to Sainz in 2016. Hopefully we're trying to we take that position away from McLaren. He's still on the inside though as we come through the uh, to a inverse turn eight. Or oh, it's not turn eight in this particular circuit, but it's the inverse turn eight from uh, Turkey as I mentioned earlier in uh, practice. We now try and challenge Verlein, who's going defensive into the final corner, which is kind of compromising our line. That might give Van Dorn an opportunity to go past us into turn one to start lap three. But thankfully, our superior power means and lack of DRS in operation means that we're able to fend off the Belgian and we're now up into 19th place. Onto the uh, main straight, or the back straight to start lap number three. But with the DRS now in operation, we have an opportunity to overtake Verlein for 18th place. He's on the ultra soft tyres and struggling so much with that front wing. That is the reason we're completely going, driving straight past him prior to the corner. Make a little bit of a mistake on the exit though, and understeer a little bit wide, but thankfully, uh, Verlon isn't too close enough, too close to uh, take advantage of that. So we have moved up another position, up into 18th. We now go through the final corner. There's a green flag in that's come out, and there's a safety car that's been called. Now, after I said earlier that we, had a safety, we hadn't had a, a safety car in a while, we finally got one here at, U, at the USA. And it looks like it's a retirement for a ha the Haas driver of Roman Grosjean. The safety car comes out just before we enter turn one here. So it could be a little bit of a hazard, but he does pull over the side there. It could be a problem, though, for uh, Verlein and Van Dorn. Let's check and see if Van Dor uh, Verlein hasn't been uh, screwed over here, like what happened in uh, Belgium to some drivers. But look at that. Very close to running into the back of the safety car. But thankfully, Verlein takes some avoiding action. Let's have a look and see what actually happened to Grosjean. He was leading, I think, the Williams of Massa, but then his... Ferrari engine lets go on the main straight. Disappointing for the American outfit at their home race to see one of their drivers out of the race, which is a bit of a shame. 
one of those things really as we now cut to the uh, start of lap five we're really just trying to catch up with the rest of the queue and also rejoin the train that's following the city car we have moved up quite a few places though with drivers making changes to their strategy i think mostly those guys were, who started on the ultra soft tire who or who were in the top 10 that have had already got warner ultra soft tires we now come through uh, i finally caught the city car queue after the second sector of lap five it looks like there's another car though that's out of the race because we're down to 18 runners and we're now up into the points in 10th i think that was a williams car of massive that is out of the race and we're just behind the other williams of strolls he's made up a good chunk of places as well but look at this this is the uh what happened to massa similar sort of problem looks like to what happened to grosjean his mercedes power and power unit giving up he was running in fourth place as well which was uh quite surprising so that's a bit of a disappointment as well for the Brazilian, especially on those uh, super tires. He could have gone a little bit longer into the race with the fact that the safety car is in play. But now, at the end of lap six, the safety car is going to be coming in at the end of this lap. So we're really just going to try and see if we can stick with Stroll and potentially sneak, have a cheeky maneuver up the inside, potentially into uh, turn one. We'll have to wait and see if we can stay close enough. As Bottas, I think, who is currently leading the Grand Prix, is taking the uh, drivers very, very slowly through this. Uh, part of the circuit. I'm expecting him to uh, put the foot, his foot on the gas on the exit of that of the uh, turn 8 of the first turn 8 and he has done now. We've now cut back to our point of view. Heading into the penultimate corner the race is to be able to resume. We're unfortunately not close enough to stroll to mount any sort of challenge but we're just trying to stick in the slipstream as best we can and ensure we don't, we're not under a threat from Veilon. Hopefully Veilon can provide us provide a little bit of a barrier between ourselves and all those guys that did make their uh, pit stops during the uh, safety car period and now coming towards turn 1. Cutting to now towards the back straight once again. We're starting to close in at the back of Lance Stroll here. We may have an opportunity to go up the, sneak up the inside of the Williams here, taking the inside line. And that was a clean manoeuvre. No understeer or anything like that into that corner. Really important move over. We're now up into uh, ninth place. Ninth place after just seven laps, after having, having, start, having started last. Meanwhile, further back, it looks like Lewis Hamilton seems to be having some sort of problems because he's in a, in a little bit of a dogfight here trying to get past some drivers but he's losing places actually he's lost a position to a, a force india i think that's with perez which is a bit weird I'm not sure if the mercedes is struggling with power as verstappen in front is also fighting his way past van dorn is now the uh, only car that's between him and verline now and now uh, hamilton's again locked up into the corner one lap later and is now getting passed by the renault of nico hulkenberg which is really weird i just don't know what's happening to lewis at the moment he's had he's had a couple of good really solid races to get himself back in the championship but this is not the time to have a really bit of a poor run in terms of a lot reliability so we now start lap number nine drs is now enabled their has actually come into the pits on at the end of this lap we're now up into eighth place i think another driver has also pitted i'm not 100 sure who it was i think it might have been the uh mercedes of bottas is actually uh pitted and, and, and lost a relinquished the lead to the Ferraris now come to the start of lap number 11 and speaking of Ferraris that is Sebastian Vettel exiting the pits just in front of us that's a crucial maneuver for the Ferrari to have any chance of winning this Grand Prix and, and over I think he's actually overhauled Bottas in the pit stops which is uh, crucial here and he's also the fact that he's managed to stay in front of us he's really want to be stuck behind us considering what happened in, a little bit in uh, Singapore and also a little bit of the skirmish that we had with uh, his teammate Raikkonen in, in Japan as we now come through the final corner Again, a few more drivers entering the pits. I think these are the guys that were on the super soft tyres to start with. And as, we, as we now move up, we're up into the pony positions, actually, which is uh, interesting. And I'm not sure who's actually in front. Vettel's in front of us. But also an interesting fact is that now Bottas is now just behind us on the ultra soft tyres. So he's going to have to come in, into the pits. But the interesting fact is, is the man who's currently leading is Jolian Palmer. Yes, you heard, you heard me right. Jolian Palmer is leading the Grand Prix. This race is absolutely crazy at the moment, but I think mainly the reason why he's in front is because of all the uh, safety car stuff and the fact that he's able to prolong that stint on the super soft tyres. And I'm expecting him to come in at the end of this lap, especially the fact that other drivers on the super soft tyres have already come in as Bottas blitzes straight past us on those uh, ultra soft tyres. I think he means he's going to have to come in for a, another pit stop a little bit later on in this race, but he's managed to overtake us and he's now going to be setting off in pursuit of vessels we now come to start lap number 14 palmer it has officially now got into the pits and we're now up into third place again ocon is the next car behind us in fourth but uh, i think he's not too, he's a bit far away for us to be uh under threat at the moment so we end up uh staying in front for a little bit longer
but only one lap later, Raikkonen is now the uh, next the nearest threat, and he goes straight past us down the uh, start finish straight up into uh, third place. We're down to fourth. I was expecting that, and once again, we decide not to fight this particular battle because we are not too far away from our pit stop. I think it is lap 15 is our pit stop at times for us to uh, change our tyres. So I thought I'd just give my tyres a little bit more of a um, time on the time just to. Uh, prolong the, the stint and the fact is we actually managed to get another three laps out of it so we ended up coming in at the end at the start of lap 18 end of lap 17 we are going to put on the super soft tyres though just to make absolutely sure the tyres will last till the end of the uh, race as we come into the pits no one else is in the pits right now so uh means we should, we should get a pretty clean stop which we have done rejoining at the moment looks like we're accelerating out the pits currently in 13th although there's someone coming on the right hand side right now i think it's the renner of hulkenberg and he's managed to stay get in front of us as we drop down to 14th place but we have managed to stay ahead of Lance Stroll who did come in uh, several laps previously whilst we were on those uh, yellow wall soft tires we've got a yellow flag is in place here as a Mercedes that's been spun around I think it's Bottas that has been spun around at the penultimate corner there could have been a bit of a hazard and potentially a virtual safety car being deployed but uh, looks like that hasn't been the case we have moved up a free position though Thanks to uh, Bottas's uh, problem. I'm not sure exactly sure what happened to the Finn. Still not good look. He's now on the super soft tyres. He's probably going to the end of the race. But there it is, a left rear sort of puncture. And he's now having to nurse it back to the pits. He's not, he's, thankfully, he's not too far away from the end. But it looks like he gets hit from a Toro Rosso. I think the Toro Rosso of Carlos Sainz, based off the helmet, has now come on board Sainz's perspective. Yes, there it is. I think the left rear hits Bottas's front right. And that's him out of the Grand Prix and uh, not I wouldn't say out of the Grand Prix I think he's out of contention for points but speaking of drivers that are out of the Grand Prix it's not a good day for Williams as Lance Stroll pulls over with some sort of mechanical problem and it's not good for us as well as Pascal Verlein also pulls over with a car problem and that which means we're down to just 16 drivers I think it's the lowest number of drivers we've had since the uh, crazy shenanigans that we had in uh um, what's it, in Belgium when we had the safety car taking drivers out left, right and centres. We now accelerate and try and make a manoeuvre on Nico Hulkenberg to take away 12th place actually due to the fact that uh, we had uh, some driver oh, well, Bottas that was, was out at World War, got spun out and that's why we moved up to 13th and we're now up to 12th after overtaking Hulkenberg very cleanly right there on the uh, superior tyre strategy. We're now off in pursuit of Alonso who somehow managed to stay in front of us throughout this Grand Prix this time around, he's going to have no defence against us on the super soft tyres and a superior power unit at this particular moment in the season. We move up into 11th place. Up next is our rival, Kevin Magnussen, who we haven't seen at all in this race. And he was just outside the points prior to the uh, start of the race. So it's really a battle between us, us two as to who's going to get this final point. So I don't think we are that close enough to uh, challenge ninth place. I think they're a bit too far ahead. As we got the inside of the Haas driver up into 10th place. Bit of a disappointment for the uh, American trick team as they're now on course to not score any points at their home race. But we may have a little bit of a problem now as Lewis Hamilton seems to have recovered from those earlier problems that he seemed to be having after the safety car restart. And he's now challenging us for 10th place here as we head up towards the braking zone at the end of the second sector. Hamilton trying to go around the outside of us as we force him to the left outside of the track. This time though, we are now starting to fight these guys because it's, we've got a little bit more uh, life in these tyres, especially the fact that we were able to prolong that initial stint. And also, it's the final set of tyres that we're going to be on for the rest of the race. So, uh, thought, why not? Let's just keep, keep, try and battle as hard as we can. If Lewis is able to get past us with us, not uh, unable to uh, make a defence, then we then hats off to him. But we're really just trying to battle for this final point here. If Hamilton tries to go around the outside of us into turn one, which is quite an ambitious move. So, we take, have to take takes the inside line we somehow managed to stick in front of him and then it's really going to re damage his uh, championship chance the fact that we're able to keep him behind for so long we've managed to keep him behind for about three four laps as we now come on to the uh say it's since the same at the start this is still lap 26 at the moment we've got three laps remaining Alton's managed to get his way around the outside of us but we have the inside line and force him out a little bit and take the take the uh racing line for the uh next part of the circuit as we start at the end of the second sector and start of the final sector. We're now on to lap 27, so only two laps remaining from Lewis to try and make a maneuver. He's going to, once again going to go try and go around the outside because we're forcing him down that uh, route with us taking him to the left, taking him to the inside of the track. Looks like we might have uh, 
out breaking this time, but he's dropped a little bit back from us. I think mainly because he must have locked up or something as we now come on board with a replay of him. Yes, he has locked up both his uh, front tyres, which means we're able to uh, fend him off for now as we now cut to the final lap of the race. Almost has got one final chance to try and snatch a point away from us. He looks like he's got a lot further ahead of us than he has done in previous laps. We've managed to break a little bit later under steering wire in the corner, so Hamilton may have an opportunity on that left-hand side, but he doesn't take advantage of it, and we're able to fend him off just about, and it looks like we should be okay, barring any sort of mistakes, to take the final point on offer in 10th place. So we come through the final corner now, now, a little bit wide into the exit, but we might have enough of, of a gap as we come across the line in 10th place. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in part for me. effort there from Ferrari to take the victory today so here they come now out onto the podium wherever you go anywhere in the world the prancing horse flags are dominant in the grandstands and they're out in force again today it's Ferrari on the top step once more And now let's take a look at the driver's standings. It wasn't the best weekend for our championship leader and their advantage at the top has been reduced. Now then, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? And now let's take a look at the constructors' standings. Ferrari extend their lead at the top of the championship. Meanwhile, Toro Rosso's strong weekend allows them to continue their march up the table. That's it for today's Grand Prix and from Antony, it's goodbye and see you again next time. So here are the results for the US Grand Prix. It's a Ferrari 1-2 with Vettel coming home in front of his teammate Raikkonen. Verstappen taking the final podium spot in third. But a big result for Toro Rosso with Carlos Sainz and Daniel Kvyat managing to get fourth and fifth, respectively. That's going to help their chances in the Constructors' Championship, particularly in the battle, I think, for fifth, the sort of fifth, sixth, seventh place where we are at the moment. Ocon coming home in a season best, I think season's best, sixth place. Ricardo in seventh. Perez in eighth, Palmer getting his, Jolene Palmer getting his first points of the season since the opening round in Australia in ninth, and we come home in, to take the final points in tenth. In what was a row of three consecutive British runners here, Palmer, myself, and then Hamilton finishing just outside the points 11th. So it's a bit of a damaging result for Mercedes with Ferrari getting the maximum points and the, and the t and Mercedes failing to get a single point from this uh, race. It might pretty much hand the Constructors' Championship to Ferrari, but first... Let's have a quick look at the drivers and see what's actually happened here. Vettel's now cut the championship deficit to Raikkonen to single digits. And now, because of the fact that both Mercedes failed to score, they are pretty much needing a miracle in the last couple of rounds to uh, have any sort of chance of winning the championship. We stay where we are in uh, eighth place, but the big movers are Ocon and Sainz, thanks to their uh, very good results from this uh, particular Grand Prix. We now have a quick look at the Constructors' Championship. And just like I said... That result for Toro Rosso actually moved them up into fifth place. 22 points from that fourth and fifth, respectively. Has failing to score whilst we getting the point to get a little bit closer to the American outfit. We've dropped to seventh thanks to Toro Rosso's sudden result. I mean, that must have been absolutely fantastic for that, that team. But we're going to have to uh, keep pushing here. We've got three rounds remaining. There's not too much. There's a bit of a gap. There's not too much of a gap between ourselves and Toro Rosso. So, uh... All to play for still with uh, three rounds remaining. We may end up having a our own uh, run of luck, especially as what we had what we had in, like, for example, Belgium. But uh, we'll have to wait and see on that front. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's Grand Prix. It was a very eventful one with all the uh, retirements and also the safety car and also the overtakes, etc. So uh, I'm hoping we're going to have more of the same in the next round, which is going to be, for the first time actually on, I think, on this channel, you're going to see me actually racing around the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez uh, circuit. So that'll be uh, fantastic to see. Let's have a, I'm curious to see how well I actually perform around that circuit because it's only really uh, driven it in quick races and stuff, not actually in a career mode. So uh, it's going to be a new experience, but I'm hoping with the, uh, fingers crossed, that upgrade, the engine upgrade that we, get, we purchased at the end of qualifying will be on the car for next time, which means we'll have a little bit more power down the street straight and therefore we'll be a little bit more competitive. So hope, again, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all 
for round 18 for the Mexican Grand Prix. So until then, see you later.